Well, after SETI began, where people started to, there, there was this idea of the great silence. People got this idea in their head that like, oh, we've been looking for decades now for signals of extraterrestrial intelligence and we haven't found any. Therefore, there's nothing out there. But that, so we'll call that the indirect Fermi paradox. And there absolutely is no indirect Fermi paradox for the most mundane of reasons, which is money. There's never been any money to look. There really, SETI was always done by researchers who were kind of like scabbing some time, you know, some extra time from their other projects to, you know, look a little bit, uh, you know, at the sky with a telescope. Telescopes are expensive. So um, Jason Wright, my, one of my collaborators, he and his students did a study where they looked at the entire search space for SETI, you know, and imagine that's an ocean, all the different stars you have to look at, the radio frequencies you have to look at, how, when you look, how often you look. And they, they looked, then they summed up all the SETI searches that had ever been done. They went through the literature and what they found was if the, if the, if that search space, if the sky is an ocean and you're looking for fish, how much of the ocean have we looked at? And it turns out to be a hot tub. That's how much of the ocean that we've looked up. We've dragged an, a hot tub's worth of ocean water up and there was no fish in it. And so now are we going to say, oh, well, there's no fish in the ocean, right? So there is absolutely positively no indirect Fermi paradox. We just haven't looked. Um, but we're starting to look. So that's what's, you know, finally we're starting to look. That's what's exciting.